Okay, as you can see, we have arrived at escapemotions.com. And the reason I brought you here was to show you Flame Painter. You see there's some <clears throat> very cool things on this site. But f with Flame Painter, as mentioned in the article, uh, we have some things that we can do to be very creative. These uh, swags or whatever you want to call them, uh, l special lighting effects, uh, very, very cool wisps of color. And uh, you can also turn on gradient. And uh, let's just click on free up here so we can have the little area to actually paint in. I uh, wanted to see the controls here. You can see as I move the mouse how it changes and the uh, size of the paint tool is controlled right here. Don't really understand the focus yet. I haven't played with it that much. But as you can see this has changed a little bit and I'm just going to use this color that you see here and just paint a little bit. Just a little quick one. If I want to erase what I just did, I can click on the erase over here, or I can click clear, and let's try that again. So there's a nice little deal. If we turn on the erase, you erase with the brush itself, which is not so cool, but you can undo uh, one step or clear. So if I did a uh, paint, let me clear this again here now we go now see I held it just a split second and it keeps painting kind of a neat effect there as well clear that now if I want to do this instead on white I can go down here BCG and again I can paint now where you see it go dark is where I'm pausing obviously and you see the gradient is on so we're getting some different colors let's clear this let's hit gradient and now it's painting with just this color click on the gradient again and you can see as I slow down we're changing colors Clear. Now, once I have something, I'm going to switch this back to black. Once I have something uh, that I like, let's click on the colors right here. Let's adjust the, the color. Once I get a, a you know, swag look that I like, I can click on Save. Give it a file name uh, that I like. And, and it could be simple, it defaults to this flame artwork. And I can just say two there at the end and click save. Now let's take this into Photoshop so you can see what to do with it. Before we do, let's go, let's clear that, change this to white, and make a swag again. Let's clear that and let's make this bigger and we'll say we want to save this didn't mean to do that so let's undo that last little click save and we'll go three on this one and save now we'll go to Photoshop okay Photoshop senior edition folks we have arrived in Photoshop and I just put this image up so we would have a background to put our swags into. I'm going to change the resolution of this though. Let's go to image size because this is a lot bigger than what our uh, color swags are. So let's just say 72 on this and let's go okay. <clears throat> I'm holding down the control key and hitting zero the number zero and it fills the screen. Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, the flame that was on black 
and I'm going to click and drag this into that file folder once it opens the one with the lake on it just drag it down and then let go okay and we can do the same thing with the white one so we go over here click on the background up to that once that opens we can drag it down and let go if you drag it down and hold the shift key down it'll drop it right in the center of your screen so let me undo a couple of times and show you let's go here grab that bring it in hold down the shift key let go you see it put it right in the middle all right <clears throat> you see what good is it to have the white or black background well let's let's address this one first uh, i'm going to alter this and change things a little bit so what I'm going to do first is change this to a smart object. So I'm going to right click on it and convert to smart object. I'm going to do the same thing with this one and right click convert to smart object. Now turn that one off, go back to this one. <clears throat> Here's how to get rid of the black. I'm going to double click on the layer right over here on the right, layer one. And that brings up the layer style palette this layer is this layer so we're coming from black to white so what we do is drag this carrot here this little arrowhead but notice how dramatic that is so to smoothly do that we hold down the alt key and that just drags it kind of a fine tune looking okay and you can go as much as you want or as little as you want. If you want some of that black in there, you can leave some of the black. It's totally up to you. All right, then let's uh, let's take that back, hold down the Alt key, get a nice smooth area. And notice <clears throat> it gives us this little icon over here on the right. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. Let's go up here to this layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click out here. Bring that up. Now if I try to bring the slider in from this side, look what's happening. It's taking what the darkest is in the image and trying to get rid of it. So since we're messing with white background now and we want it to drop out, we come from this side. And again, to make it smooth, we hold down the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, and we go this way taking out as much as we want or as little as we want now here's why we did let's uh, turn that one off and, and we just have this one the reason why we want that to be a smart object is what if I you know I want a little more of that white I can double click on this little icon and it brings the layer style back up with our changes so I can move that back over and bring more of that white in if I wish to. Turn that off. Same thing on the black. I can click on this and bring in more of that black to make it a little more dramatic. So that's the benefit of the smart object. So I think you can see uh, that the little flame generator here can... Uh, flame painter can be kind of an interesting uh, thing to play around with and we like I say we can export it open it up in Photoshop as a JPEG and uh, it works very nicely it's something to definitely experiment with have some fun with and I haven't done uh, anything let's change colors here let's go uh, let's say here Now, I, I held it down a really long time, and you can see what it did. Let's go to blue. All right, we'll change the focus. Hit clear. Change the focus way up. And it's kind of slower. Holding it down longer. 
certainly the more you swirl it, the neater the effects are going to be. And remember, if we bring this into Photoshop, we can get rid of parts of this if we don't want to have it there. So let's do a save. And this one I'm going to call blue. Just to add that in there so we'll know which one it is. And we go back to Photoshop. And I'll turn this one off, and I'll go up here and just open it right in here. Okay, and there's blue. And I'll take this, drag it up, bring it down, shift, let go, and it goes to the middle. Uh, I didn't make that into a smart object yet, so let's do that. Convert to smart object. And I can go ahead then and drop out some of this stuff if I want to. So let's double click over here and we're coming from black this time. So we'll hold down the Alt key and we go this way. Let's move this out of the way so we can see because this is really kind of what I wanted to save. So let's go back a little bit. Then we can click OK. We can put a mask on this, turn on a regular paintbrush, and 45 is okay and we just now let's go harder that's going to take a while to so we mask this stuff out when we get up there closer we're going to be a little more careful and we need a harder edge so let's go up here and change that edge over like this. Let's make this bigger. And we can click right there, come down here and shift click. Clean some of that up. So then if we want the transition to be a little smoother, we soften the brush back up a little bit. Make it a bigger brush. And we can go inside here. So you can see once you create that, you can really, you know, edit it all you want to. Let's go control minus. Let's do a control T. And we can make that bigger. We can turn it. And double click. Let's get rid of some more of that up in there. So you can see we can, you know, go in there and mask all of these areas if we want to. I just wanted to show you how creative we can be with some of this stuff. It it can really, you know, make things a little more fun uh, to experiment and uh, try out new things. I know I get a kick out of it. This is like the best video game ever when you work in Photoshop and, and see about being creative. And we go around here. And, and I even sometimes forget that I'm recording. As I start having more fun than I should. Go back out. We could erase stuff up in here. And, you know, you know the drill. Uh, we can go as far as we want. And we can turn right around and paint with white. We can press the letter X and change that to white. Or just flip it with this little arrow. And make my brush bigger. And bring that stuff back again. And bring all of it back I want to bring back. I do kind of like having some of that. Maybe not all of it. Let's go Control Alt Z and we'll change the opacity way down and just bring that back gradually so we don't have a hard line. And that wraps it up. Thanks for tuning in, Photoshop Senior Edition folks. Talk to you all later. Bye.